Good morning, friends, and welcome to West Park United Church of Christ. No matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And this is a day that our God has made, my friends, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am on the front porch of our church, so as I talk through our morning announcements, you may hear a little traffic going by. But this time of year, we so much love to be outside in God's creation, so I thought that we would do things slightly different this morning. So amen to this beautiful, beautiful year that we have been blessed with in our nature and in God's creation, even as we struggle in the midst of turmoil and a global pandemic. Friends, I would like to uh, bring your attention to a few announcements today. Uh, immediately after worship, of course, we will host our uh, virtual coffee hour. If you would like to join us for coffee hour, there's information on how to do that on our website, westparkucc.org under the COVID-19 update tab. Uh, there's also information in that same place on how on that same place on how to join our uh, weekly Bible study. Uh, this coming uh, Wednesday on July 1st, we will uh, study Genesis 21. Uh, so take a look at that and there's information again on how to join under the COVID-19 update tab. Uh, the church office will be closed this Thursday, uh, July the 2nd in commemoration of Independence Day. If you need to contact me, uh, you may call the church office uh, and leave a voicemail in my mailbox at the church and I will return your call as soon as possible. Uh, of course, we will be here Monday through Wednesday, so feel free to call the office during that time uh, should you need to contact anyone. Friends, today is the anniversary of the Stonewall Uprisings, of the events and the protests that began the movement in this country, in our society, and in the Western world for the liberation and the equality of our LGBTQIA plus friends. So as we go about this day, let us remember all of those over the years, over the months, who have fought for equality, who continue to celebrate their pride and continue to celebrate who God created them to be. Um, amen, my friends. Let us continue this morning in the spirit of worship. Please join me in the gathering prayer. God of love, plant us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the vine of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us that we may abide in you and live in your love. In your holy name we pray, amen. prayer. God tells us over and over in the Bible not to be afraid. Our gifts this morning are one way that we trust God even in a world that keeps telling us to be afraid. We let go of thinking that we are on our own and live each day in graceful dependence on God. Let us continue to offer our gifts to our church during this time of physical separation. Amen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Here ends the reading of today's gospel. Friends, one of the most renowned theologians of the last century, Karl Barth, once said that a sermon should be prepared with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. Now what he meant by that was that the Bible is meant to teach us how to live in the world. That the Bible speaks to what we are going through in every time and in every age. That we cannot wrap our fate around us like a cloak to hide from the world, but that as people of faith, we must confront the realities of our current events through the lens of Jesus Christ. Now, I have long believed this model of preaching is precisely what God calls us to do. But as a preacher, with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other, in recent weeks and months, there is so much to confront, so much to talk about. A global pandemic, worldwide protests and riots, corruption in government. Just where do we start? We start with the Bible. What is our Bible story saying to us today? What might we learn from the Gospel of John that we can put to use in our lives today, right now, in this very moment? Now, in the coming days, our church will reopen. In the coming weeks, we will gather in person as a community of faith. In the coming weeks, we will rejoice together right here in this very building. We don't know exactly when that will be. But what we do know is that the grim reality is that things are going to be much different than they were when we last filled this church on March 8th. Today is the 16th Sunday we have been closed. And when we return, it won't be all of us. With our seating limits, and those of us who feel unsafe to return right now, it will feel strange. It will feel strange to be in worship without singing. It will feel strange not to shake hands. It will feel strange to have to keep a physical distance from each other. Now, I don't say any of that to shock us. I just want us to prepare ourselves for the reality of what worship will look like when we return. Now, the first time I joined you for worship in our sanctuary was on March 12, 2017. It was three years to the day that our church closed its doors because of the coronavirus. 
Now that Sunday in 2017, we talked about Nicodemus and what it means to be born from above. What it means to be born anew. And when we reopen, whenever that may be, we will be born anew, my friends. But in the newness, in the strangeness, in the novelty, I have no doubt that those of us who are able to join in worship and those of us who will continue to worship from home, that we will all be filled with the knowledge that the Holy Spirit is always with us because we know that God is always with us and Jesus Christ is always with us. Now the Gospel of John records what we call the I am statements. These are seven things that Jesus tells us about himself to help us understand God. Seven metaphors. These are seven statements that Jesus makes to explain his relationship with humanity. To explicate the new covenant, the new testament that God makes with us through the incarnation, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first is in John 6 when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Now Jesus is reminding us that of course bread sustains physical life, but what he offers will sustain our spiritual lives. In John 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light to guide us in a world filled with darkness and shadows. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the gate. Jesus protects us in the same way that a shepherd protects his, the flocks. In John 11, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Death is not the final word for those of us in Christ Jesus. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is committed to caring for us and to watching over all of us. In John 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the source to all truth and knowledge about God. And then that brings us to today's reading from John 15, where Jesus says, I am the true vine. When we link ourselves to Jesus Christ, we enable God's mercy and grace to flow in us and through us. Then we can bear fruit, good fruit that will honor our God. Now, there is something in all of these statements, though, that I think gets lost in translation. Literally lost in translation. <clears throat> in the Greek that these words were written, there is not an act, a need to actually say the words, I am. In the original Greek, this would ordinarily be implied. Kind of like analogous to English, if you asked me, if you said, hey, Jason, are you a pastor? I would say yes. But what you would understand that I have said is, yes, I am. Same exact thing. But the words in John actually include Jesus saying the words, I am. It's not implied as it ordinarily would be. And in that moment, Jesus is telling his listeners and us that he is God. Now, remember Moses at the burning bush. When Moses asked God's name, the reply was quite cryptic. God said, I am who I am. Or I will be what I will be. There are many ways to translate that. And in this moment in John 15, Jesus is reminding us of that moment. Because Jesus says, I am. Using the exact same words that our God used so long ago in talking to Moses. When Jesus says, I am the true vine, he is telling us two things. First, I am. Jesus is claiming the authority of the divine, the divine. Jesus is telling us that he is the same as God, the parent. Just as the writer of God, the Gospel of John told us in the opening line of this book. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Because Jesus is God. Now, the second thing in this that I believe Jesus is telling us is the metaphor that he is the true vine. 
that all thing right all things righteous and good grow from his branches that he is the creator of life John 1 verse 3 all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being what has come into being in him was life apart from the vine there is no creation there is no life now we like to complicate things often in our lives. Things that don't necessarily need to be complicated. <clears throat> we like to complicate the pandemic with personal liberty. It's my right not to wear a face mask. It's my personal liberty to go about in public and not keep a physical distance. We also like to confuse issues in our lives to complicate that as well. That man in Georgia shouldn't have been running through a white neighborhood. That's why he was murdered. That woman in Louisville should have let the police storm her house without any resistance. That's why she died. But Jesus breaks it down for us right here in John 15. Jesus says these words. Jesus says, I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. Jesus doesn't say that he has given us a glimpse into God's dreams for us. Jesus doesn't say he has told us what we can handle. Jesus says he has told us everything. Everything. In the ministry of Jesus Christ, we have been taught all that we need to know about God. Everything. And you know what that makes all of us? It makes us know-it-alls. Because Jesus knew it all and he shared it with us. And what do we need to know? Wait for it, because you've heard this before. What we need to know is that you shall love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, Jesus tells us. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is everything. And how do we know that is everything? Because Jesus tells us so. Jesus goes on to say, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, everything else will fall into place if we do those two things. Now on that first Sunday I worshipped with you in our sanctuary. The sanctuary that's right here behind these doors. In this holy and sacred space. I was overwhelmed when we passed the peace. If you haven't been to another church for a while, you may not even think about how different the passing of the peace here is at our church. It lasts a long time. A very long time. Now in many churches, passing of the peace is 20 or 30 seconds, if they observe it at all. But not here. Here at West Park, it takes a good five to six, seven, eight minutes we say hello and peace be with you to everyone, to all of us. Now, I was overwhelmed when we did that because personally and honestly, I'll be, I'll be truthful with you, I thought it was weird. I thought it lasted way too long. After you called me to be your pastor, I began to see things in a different way. After I got to know each of you and learned how much you care for each other, I mean really care for each other. I understood how very special this moment in worship is for the life of our church in particular. When we return, my friends, we will not be able to pass the peace. And we will need to grieve that loss. And that loss should grieve us. But the essential nature of passing the peace is to show other people and others in our community our love for them and to receive their love for us. And we will continue to do that, of course, as we have continued to do throughout the entire time of our closure. We'll do that with our love, with our hearts, with our smiles, with our hand sanitizer with our masks and what better way could we possibly show our neighbor how much we love them than to help keep them safe from COVID-19. 
May it be so. Friends, I invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer. O oh, gracious and holy God, you are the one who has made all things. You are the one who will make all things new, including us, O oh God, including our whole world, that we might dawn in your new creation, that the place that we inhabit, the earth that we inhabit, will one day be new and refreshed, will one day be that great kingdom, will one day be that great place where we all dwell in harmony and in peace, surrounded by your love, O oh God, surrounded by our love for each other and our communities and our entire existence. This day we lift up the men and women at West Park United Church of Christ as we still can struggle with our physical isolation from each other, not knowing exactly when we will return to church. But we know through this all, O oh God, in our online worship, in our phone calls, in our prayers for each other, that we are staying connected. And our ministries continue to thrive in vibrancy, in outreach, and in celebration of Jesus Christ. Today we lift up our LGBTQIA plus friends in their celebration of all of our celebrations. That we are all created in your image, O oh God that you are perfect, and because of that, you have created us in a multitude of diversities. Today, we lift up the men and women around this world who are infected and who have died from this global pandemic, from COVID-19, oh God, comfort their families and welcome each of them who has left this life into your heavenly realm, that they may each have a seat at the heavenly banquet that we know you prepare for us, oh God. And as a community, we return to you the words that Jesus taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, guide upon you. With his sheep, securely fold you. God be with us till we meet again. Till we meet. Jesus feet till we meet till we meet God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again Neath his wings protecting hide Daily mamma still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet.